Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I am going to be taking a look at the EK Nucleus AIO CR360 Lux GRGB. Now yes I did just read it off the back of the box and that's because it's a very long name for me to try and memorise because I don't have a script. Uh, so this 360 model, new AIO from EK, they uh, are coming in, I've looked on their website, Euro wise, they're just below the 170 euro mark for the uh, model with the RGB ring around it. Now, I know Dave uh, quite well, Davido Libido, whatever you want to call him. Um, I normally call him like rude names because that's just the kind of relationship that we have. I get a lot of abuse from Dave. So when he asked me if I would take a look at this, I said yes, but I am not going easy on it. You're EK, you work for EK, I am going to be the worst person ever to send it to. And he still sent it. Now, that could either be him being incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. And it's probably going to be the last one in reality because it's Dave we're talking about. Hey! Anyway, so. The uh, 360 millimeter AIO from EK. Now we are very used to them giving us uh, full water cooling kits and making things look very spangly and lovely, but giving us an AIO isn't something that we would necessarily instantly relate to them. Now I have it fitted, but I have taken lots of photos before I fitted it so that I could show you things because when I first got it out, it's ARGB, so I was instantaneously worried because with other brands you have your PWM cable and you have your ARGB cable and then they go down and they go into a hub so you end up with this mass of cabling behind the back of your case and it takes you ages to kind of like fit it and make it tidy but they've actually gone in a really nice way with this. So they've now got their own proprietary 8-pin cable, which, when you look at the fans, it does look like a mini power supply CPU or PCR Express cable on the back. Three of those pins are for the ARGB, four of those pins are for your PWM header. And amazingly as well, because they know you're probably going to be using a few of them together, what they've done is they've made the cables just fan length so that you can daisy chain them together really easily. And then what happens on the other end is that's where you have your cable that you connect. On the end of said cable, there is a PWM header and there is an ARGB header. So that you can plug that into your motherboard with your CPU header and you, most motherboards, like the Asus one I'm having here, has got an ARGB at the top right hand corner. You plug that in and all the fans run off of that. Really simple. The pump itself, two cables as well. Same again, plug one of them into your ARGB, sorry, yeah, one of them into your ARGB, you can do, but the fan one has a tail off on it anyway, so you can daisy chain that as well. And then the other one you just put into your AIO header. Again, on the Asus motherboard, at the top I have an AIO header, a, a CPU header, and a CPU optional header. C easy peasy, so we've clicked those in. There's a little bit of cabling around the back, but it's not a problem. But the beautiful thing about it is they all go together, very slim line cables around the back, nice and easy. Down the side of said radiator, see these lovely aluminium branded, sorry, al brushed aluminium panels. You can take those off. So if you want to paint them, I would suggest if you're worried about warranty and stuff, then just a little bit of vinyl, as in like sticker, you could put down the side to brand it very nicely yourself. The other thing I would say uh, at this point is, EK, please make a white one. I'll explain more in a bit. Uh, the pump itself, the top can be turned around. It can go all four way rounds and you can quite literally just pull it off. And as you can see here, you can see the light underneath, but you can just pop it off. The, um, the pins on the back are for the EK logo, nothing else, as you can see on there. Now, by plugging it directly into your motherboard, it means you can control that with your motherboard uh, ARGB software. You don't need anything proprietary if you don't want to. I've used this with the Acer software and it just got used as the normal, uh, like an ARGB strip. It meant that I could do all of the Asus colour combos and stuff, but for the filming, I just left it on white for it to look nice and pretty and illuminated. 
Down the side of the pump, the fittings are completely rotational. You can literally spin them around a million ways. They have lovely little aluminium ends on them as well with a nice bit of a machining touch on them and the braid is very nice. Uh, there's a fair amount of hosing there as well, so I've got it in a big Helios, but you would be able to cope with a bigger case. If your uh, cables don't stretch enough, then just turn the put the radiator around the other way because it looks the same both ways and have the hoses at the back end of your case and then you've got way more hose to uh, play with. I've only done it uh, this way like this to use some of it up and keep it off of the graphics card. Deep breaths. So uh, the fans that come with it spin at 2200 rpm and this is the point where we kind of get into the like the testing mythology and that sort of thing and as I've said, Dave said, would I like to test it? And I wanted to pick fault. And uh, I wanted to go hell for leather. Now, at this point, I've already said I kind of wanted a white one. Once I'd built it and everything, I felt like I really wanted an LCD screen on it. And it's a shame they didn't have one. So I looked on their website and they've got one. Uh, so you can have this one, save yourself 30 pounds, 30 euros. Or you can go on the website again and you can get the one with the ARGB screen. I've not had one yet, but I'd like to know whether uh, it's programmable, whether it's hot swappable. I don't know. I have asked the question, but bless dear Dave, he's in Vegas and uh, he's probably got hangover at the moment because it's CES. We're at the start of January. So the test system. You'll see in a minute the graphs are enormous and that's because we've been testing on this system for quite a while, although I will say it's probably about time to move on. Uh, we've got a 9900K in here, which I know some of you are going to gasp, but we do need to remember that we need heat to be able to test a, uh, a cooler like this. And being able to produce said heat and then cool said heat is all that really matters. It doesn't really matter what CPU you have. At the end of the day, once you look at the graphs, it's probably going to be roughly how it would form if we put, uh, started off with a brand new rig. Anyway. Uh, 1.2 volts, 4.8 gigahertz, fixed. Only thing I change is the fan speeds on the actual unit itself. Now I always start off with max, and it depends on how low I go, depends on how it performs. That is critical. So if at max it only just passes, with this it was 2200 RPM. If I then go down to 1500 RPM and it fails, it's failed because it's got too hot. So we tested this at 2,200 RPM, 1,500 RPM. We then went down to 1,000 RPM and it still passed. So because I'm an idiot and I had to find a way to make it look bad, I tested it 600 RPM and it passed with really good results considering it was running 600 RPM fixed. There was no fan curve. 600 RPM, absolutely fixed, and it still passed. And here are the results. Yeah, it did really well. The reason why there are numbers at the bottom of the graph right next to each other is because it's absolutely bat it out the park. Now, normally at this point, what I would do is I'd then put the CPU at stock and run the tests again, but it's absolutely battered the overclock to such a point. What's the point? I, I can't turn it down below 600 RPM. Why do I need to test with less heat? It's already done amazing. So it's actually taken me less time to test because it's really good. Like to the point, it's the start of 2023. EK have basically set the benchmark for the rest of the year. Like I'm gonna have, if I change the rig, this is gonna be the first AIO I'm gonna test because this is now the, the benchmark of what's good and what's not. This is now the cooler for the other brands to beat. Like, it's an absolute masterstroke. Now, yes, it could be a com combination of beautiful pump, beautiful water plate or hot plate, whatever you would like to call it, brilliant radiator, brilliant fans. Whatever you would like to say, though, it's done an it's like a master stroke in how to cool a CPU with an AIO, not take too much of the proverbial brown stuff, 
in pricing, sure 170 uh, euros for a big 360 AIO is never going to be called cheap. But when it performs like this, it's not going to be, is it? They've obviously just gone, we're going to make the best one that we possibly can do, and then they can decide whether they want a fancy screen on it or not, and that's then up to them. Also, if I'm completely honest, if it was much cheaper than this, you'd never buy a full water cooling loop ever again, would you, other than aesthetics? But that's the other side of it, is it is very pretty. And the only thing I could possibly ask for more would be, can you please make a white one? And that is because if I put a black one in one of my own personal systems, it would stand out a little bit. And I really, really want one of these in one of my own personal systems. And I think that should say an awful lot. It should speak volumes, orders of magnitude, all of that kind of stuff. It's quite literally the best at 360 millimeter AIO I have ever tested and for it to have performed like that at 600 RPM as, as well is an absolute master stroke. So I set out to try and make sure that this wouldn't perform too well and it's actually just shown me up and basically just gone, what else have you got? Come on then. So now what you need to decide is whether you want to wait and see if they make a white one like I need to, or whether you're just going to basically say, I need a 360 millimeter AIO. What's the best one? That is it. Kylie Tom Logan out. At this point, I should be dropping mics and stuff because I have nothing more to say. It's absolutely left me speechless about how good this thing was, even though I was trying to be a complete moron about it. Although me trying to be a complete moron about it is a little bit over the top. I just wanted to be very kind of picky about it and I, I just couldn't be. To the point where it performed so well, I had to make sure that I'd got all the settings correctly and I went back in and I checked it again. And uh, don't worry, it was tested with the fan side on and everything, but I needed to have it open so that you didn't get the reflection off of the light. Yeah. I'm not going to go round and round in circles anymore. Enjoy your beers in Vegas, Dave. Please make sure that you have a cheesecake factory for me. And thank you for sending me this. Can I please have a white one?